Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us. Well, You're I suppose welcome. a good, good place to start would be to pick up on a couple of the, uh, of the points that Sean and Christophe were just uh, talking about, which is the oil price. It is on everybody's mind. Um, and I'd like to, to put the question to you as to what uh, the next steps for the UAE or OPEC would be on this. We certainly witnessed a rather relaxed um, reaction to the oil price decline in the sense that OPEC did not act in November to cut production. Uh, and recent comments have indicated that it's quite comfortable to see it drop a little further. What would you say to that? I don't think it's uh, the fact that we are happy about the price or the fact that we don't want to do anything about it. It's just, uh, as uh, we mentioned, we are not alone in this market. OPEC have other partners producing oil as well. OPEC tried to uh, be... Uh, realistic on the growth and, and we let enough room for the others to, uh, to bring capacity. But we cannot be uh, continue uh, just protecting a certain price. That is, not, uh, that is not the only aim of OPEC. OPEC as a sensible uh, producers and uh, I don't want to talk about, I'm not the spokesman of OPEC, I'd like to talk about the United Arab Emirates. We are not the um, we are concerned about the, uh, the, the, the balance of the market, but we cannot, under any circumstances, be the only party that is responsible to balance the market. We have seen the uh, oversupply uh, coming from primarily the, uh, the, uh, shale, uh, the shale oil, uh, and that needed to be corrected. I think, I think, uh, any, if you ask any uh, economist, anyone who is uh, sensible, he'll tell you that the decision is strategic and it's rational for OPEC. And do you, are you saying that needed to be protected in terms of the balance of the market? Uh, do you see that this action that OPEC has taken so far um, will do that for the medium term? It may have corrected things for the time being. <coughs> Excuse me, but do you see that continuing uh, as a strategy and having an impact? beyond this year? I think the strategy will not change in my view. What's going to happen by not panicking and readjusting or cutting the, uh, the, the output from uh, the OPEC countries, we are telling the market that, uh, and the other producers that they need to be rational. They need to be like OPEC. They need to look at the growth in the international uh, market for, for oil, and they need to cater their additional production for that growth. It applies to any market. And unless that is there, it's not going to be balanced. Even if someone cut production, it will happen again. It's like what Christoph mentioned. If the decision was to cut output, to cut it to what extent? To cut it by a million, a million and a half, we all know that in a few months that production is going to be produced from the shale oil and then we will have the problem again. What are we going to do? Are we going to cut it again, cut it again? That cannot be, uh, cannot be done and it cannot be viewed fair as well. Do you, do you share Christophe's point that he made that we may see a period of sustained volatility as opposed to high prices or low prices in the coming two to five year period? I think we are passing through a very interesting time. And history tells us that whenever we try to predict what's going to happen, we will get it wrong. So uh, I, think, I think what I would uh, say that we're not, it's, it's unlikely that we will see a sudden rise. It will take some time, and we mentioned that. Is it going to be a year? or is it going to be a couple of years? I think that will all depend on what we see in, the next, in this quarter and, and, and the next quarter. The first half of 2015 will give us more data to, uh, to predict what's going to happen in 2016. I, I think the current prices are not sustainable for, not for us, but for the other producers which brings 
I mean, the shale oil alone brings uh, almost four million from the United States. And the hope for the growth is to bring another four million by 2020. So that cannot be sustained or produced or invested in at the current oil prices. This is going back to the basics like His Excellency Senora mentioned. So if we go back to the basics, this is not, it does not make sense. Okay, can, let me ask you a little about the UAE then, and how that's going to impact uh, investment in production in the UAE, per se, this particular oil price range, if we assume it's going to remain uh, under $50. Is it going to impact production here at all? Do you see any differences in uh, planning on that front? Well, UAE did not decide we will produce this. This is the production target for us. We, we are building capacity toward the, the, uh, the total production capacity of the country. And that, that will continue, your plans to do that yes. are going to continue regardless of the oil price? Oh yes, because most of those projects already committed and they are already in the construction. Some of them completed uh, or will be completed soon and some of them uh, are in the pipeline. We cannot, as a, as a responsible oil producer and a reliable supplier in the market, just stop our plans every time there is a volatility in the market. That is not uh, wise and that is not uh, the, the, the plan. For us in the United Arab Emirates, we aspire to keep our role as a reliable supplier. We will continue investing. We passed through a more difficult times. We need to remember, before this stability of $100, what was the prices? And uh, what, we, uh, what we will see in the future, the, 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 I think the past four years of uh, relatively higher oil prices showed a slowdown in the economy of the world. And then we did all of our forecast based on those four years. Now, if we see a one year or more of a stable uh, lower, I think it will take time to stabilize. I agree, I agree with, with Christoph. But is that time going to be two years? Is it going to be three years? It depends how rational the producers are. How They're, they cooperate, perhaps. If I could just take your point about uh, the UAE's sort of long-term plans to continue to increase capacity. Uh, um, can we talk a little bit about that? Obviously, some of the fields that the UAE is trying to enhance, older fields that you know are uh, almost reached total op optimum capacity that you're trying to enhance and get more out of. There's a lot of complicated projects out there. Is there any concern um, within the industry here and within uh, the national uh, industry here that there's any risk to asset integrity while you're trying to enhance some of these very challenging uh, oil fields and trying to increase capacity there? No, uh, the asset integrity is one of the top priorities for us here in the United Arab Emirates. The safety of the people and the safety of the environment is taken very seriously in, the, in, in our uh, industry. And uh, we are not going to act irrationally because of the drop in the oil prices. We are one of the uh, lowest, uh, still one of the lowest uh, production cost uh, per barrel. Uh, and we have a very high level of efficiency. I think what's going to happen, we will, uh, and we will need the, uh, the service uh, companies and the contractors to understand the cycle. And I think it's an opportunity to optimize cost and try to reduce uh, cost. Uh, in, in the EPC and, and on the projects to come. This will happen not only in the United Arab Emirates, I think it will happen uh, across. That does not mean necessarily cutting on the maintenance or cutting on the integrity of the, of the plants. Okay, I'd like to address also uh, another question that's sort of related to, to the oil price to an extent, uh, and that is of domestic uh, power supply and demand. Um, again, I mean, as His Excellency Senora alluded to in his, in his uh, lecture, that you know, the region as a whole must become better at controlling consumption, at becoming more efficient, there's no excuse for having power shortages, etc. The UAE has taken some steps on that front. 
Uh, where, where do you think uh, the country stands now with a view to taking further steps on, for example, reducing energy subsidies so as to achieve this ultimate aim of becoming more efficient and uh, wasting less? Well, I would like to tackle that question by three main pillars that we're trying to do. First of all, we are working very hard on the demand side management. So improving the efficiency of the plants, distribution, and uh, trying to switch off any uh, single cycle uh, power generation, trying to, to, to be more efficient in, in using the, uh, the energy we have. The second is the, uh, of the demand side management initiatives is to talk to the customers and try to, I think we are beyond talking now. We start going to your house and changing or retrofitting some of the, uh, and of course we cannot do it for all, but we are trying to give, uh, to give examples and help the people how to become efficient by installing and changing few things inside the houses. The regulations is also improving, and they are getting stringent, more stringent uh, year after year through the implementation of uh, new building uh, standards for buildings, uh, building codes, and uh, as well uh, the devices or the, the, the strict uh, rules on importing the devices that are not energy or, or not, does not achieve certain limits of energy efficiency. Uh, Do you think that it's necessary to have regional cooperation on this particular topic so as to prevent uh, you know, any cheating across borders, if you like, while you know, the UAE is taking very serious action on this? Is that going to work if its neighbors aren't doing the same? Well, we are trying also to work on laws. Uh, you're talking about primarily gasoline, yes, right? Yes, for example. Uh, gasoline and diesel, I think we have a, a model to be followed on the diesel. We freed the diesel in the market, and uh, it went very well. Uh, others are envying us of, of achieving this, and they are now trying to do the same. We have seen initiatives in Kuwait. Uh, I know Saudi, Saudi Arabia, they're working on something, and others. And I think it's just a matter of time. People have to do it. Uh, it drives an irrational uh, consumption levels, and we will issue, the ministry is working on a law on uh, the, the uh, preventing the smuggling and, and, and of, the, uh, of, of diesel or, uh, or other uh, uh, production, um, petroleum products. And I think Saudi Arabia is working on, on, on a similar law because any of those neighbors who have subsidized or cheaper uh, petroleum products, they don't want those to be sent across the borders and, and, and abused by, by smugglers. And, and this, this will be fixed. We're talking together uh, across the GCC, and we are trying to find measures of, 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 uh, and, and laws of how to prevent uh, the, the abuse. Uh, okay, thank you, Minister. Well, I'd like to just take it a bit beyond uh, the UAE and just look at, again, bring back the, the sort of demand picture uh, for... Uh, for, for the region and uh, you know, look at the consumers of UAE oil and gas and the region's oil and gas and take, have a look at China a little bit and ask you, um, obviously China has had a slowdown in growth for the last uh, few months. It posted, I think, a 7.3% growth in the last quarter of last year. Uh, and it's you know, had five years of double digit growth and now we're faced with uh, figures like 7%. Clearly it's one of the biggest consumers also of uh, regional gas and oil. So how do you see that impacting um, producers here? Well, as I told you earlier, all of the plans of how China will grow was based on the $100, okay? I think this, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, drop on the oil prices is rather recent for a whole economy to, uh, to change. Those giant economies, they need time to adjust. They need to ensure that is this stable, the, the, uh, the prices that we have, or is it going to go back to normal? Uh, and I think if it's going to take a year, we will definitely see a positive uh, uh, growth, not only in China, even in Europe, 
uh, at, at, at some stage. But, I mean, but given, given, sorry, given the drop in demand in China and, of course, in Europe, the forecasts are just, just show that this is going to um, increase in terms of the demand uh, dropping. Um, and if we just look at the demand supply situation again, Russia, for example, which is now trying to secure new demand markets for itself and is looking to Asia, for example, to take more of its energy uh, as, it's, as it seems to be a little bit under pressure. Is that impacting at all the thinking of OPEC or, or, uh, or the UAE in terms of where uh, it seeks to sell its oil or gas? Is it still, does it still feel that China is a secure demand market for its uh, product? The, the oil business, we're not in the business of selling gas more than the contract that we have uh, which, uh, to, to, to Japan. So keeping that aside, we are in the business, UAE is in the business of selling oil. Is it going to change uh, the, uh, the, demand, the, the demand on our crude? I don't see that. I see uh, a higher demand on our crude uh, I think what's going to happen with us opening up the refinery and now we are in the commissioning phase of our waste refinery, that will take the amount of crude meant for export in the United Arab Emirates as crude versus products. That will shift because when we, when waste is fully, mm -hmm. is, is fully um, commissioned and, and at, at, uh, at top capacity, we will be refining around a million barrel inside UAE okay. before it was 500,000. So there is, so the, the, the amount of, of, of crude available for export is going to be a bit less because of that okay. fact. And we will be uh, selling products to, uh, to, the, to the customers. The fact that we have storage in Korea and in Japan will make us closer to, to the, and, and, and more reliable as suppliers. Uh, the fact that we have, we are seeing today a more demand on our crude uh, because of the nature of the, of the UAE crude, Marban and DAS, uh, does not show us, does not make us furious of, uh, of that competition. Yes, competition will be there, but we don't see it a threat or something that we need to be worrying about. And of course, you're opening up the market here to more investment from China, of course, into the oil and gas sector, both in the UAE exactly. and, and beyond in Saudi, and, and we've seen them going into Iraq as well. Do you see that as, as, as also securing um, an already strong relationship? But is that part of the strategy that if we get, we are seeing a lot of uh, more Chinese investment into here and it's beginning to possibly displace sort of the traditional partners of the last 30 to 40 years. Is that part and parcel of uh, securing demand as well? It's part of, of, of a strategic partnership with certain customers. And uh, I think it's not just done like that. It's a plan. We know, we look at the market, and we are trying to strike a, a true partnership with those, with those customers. We're not interested only in selling them oil and uh, for some time, and that's it. No, we're trying to create values by using that partnership, giving them opportunity here, seeking opportunities there, and even working in third country together. So uh, this kind of uh, thinking, uh, partnership model, it does not only applies to the customers. It will also applies to the IOCs who are working here. And this is what we aspire to, uh, to build. The true partnership is the only way, in our view, that uh, can distinguish us from the others. Okay, Minister, thank you. I'd like to actually just give the opportunity to the floor now to uh, put a few questions to His Excellency. So if you could have a think about what you'd like to ask him. And I'd like to invite the Managing Director of Maersk Oil Middle East, Richard Doid, to uh, put the first question to the Minister. Thank you. Good morning once again, Your Excellency. And not surprisingly, another oil price uh, related question. And this is, so with, the, with Abu Dhabi's um, strong cash reserves and relatively low cost of production and forward thinking approach, do you see um, it adopting a kind of uh, counter cyclical or contrarian uh, approach to the, the current uh, low oil price environment. I'm thinking, for instance, internationally, with um, through Mubadala or potentially Taka, 
um, becoming opportunistic, looking at distressed assets and companies, shifts of capital allocation and focusing on, on different markets, that kind of approach. Yeah, definitely. All of those investment slash, uh, I would say, uh, oil and gas, because Mubadala Petroleum is not a purely investment. It it's, it's also has the, some capabilities or aspiration to, to produce. All of them, they will be looking at, uh, at, at, uh, at targets, because this is an opportunity. Uh, if you believe that things will, will, uh, will improve uh, upward, and we believe... Uh, as I mentioned, things will not stay for long at this, at this oil prices. So yes, we are uh, going to encourage those companies to, uh, to look at uh, targets. Uh, and uh, we have seen in the past that, these, uh, that the, the, uh, the, the periods of low production uh, creates the best values for, uh, for those who buy at that time. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, I think, the hope. But we will leave it to the boards uh, of those companies to make those decisions. I, d I don't think the government is going to push anyone. But like Adia and others, uh, they, they, have, they have a structured uh, way of looking at the investments. And uh, but I There's definitely a trend of national oil companies, not just from the UAE, obviously, becoming more international and venturing into new partnerships abroad and to sort of other asset development uh, opportunities when they don't necessarily have to, when they have some, everything on their doorstep. So there is an impetus to, to, to go further than, than they were. I think, uh, I don't agree that it's, they don't have to. I think they should. Mm -hmm. The reason, this is the business that we know very well. And if we don't use this know-how, the technologies that we developed here, and we go and invest and do it, outside and take opportunities, then we will be uh, losing an opportunity. And uh, I think, I think it's, it's, it's rational. This is a thing that we know. Uh, we have a vested interest from many companies here. And uh, we aspire to go and work together with them uh, outside. And we have done. And we have seen the benefits of such, of such investments. But for those investments, you need not to have the mindset of, an invest, of a short-term investor. You need to have the mindset of a long-term investor. You need to take the risk of the oil prices going down and going up uh, as, as a nature of this business, and not to panic if the oil prices uh, drops and then go and sell everything you have. That is not how IOCs are, are, are uh, in this business. Okay, well, we have time perhaps for just one more question uh, from the audience, one or two. If you just put your hands up, we'll hand you a microphone. You have one here, Sean, in the front. Thank you. Your Excellency, um, the outlook for, as Christoph mentioned, for the oil price having on c countries or NOCs that are looking to offer concessions in the coming years, Mexico, he mentioned, and others, uh, Iran possibly, but also the UAE is in a concession renewal phase uh, over the coming years. Uh, I'm wondering your thoughts on what the impact of this new price cycle may have or not on that uh, and what the outlook for that is. I think it depends on, uh, on how you look at the, uh, at the horizon. All of those who are bidding on a long-term relationship that is going to last for 30 years or, or more, they are having a view on that as, as a long-term investment. They are not going to change their mind uh, that every time we have a, uh, a blip or a glut in the market. Uh, most of them, we, uh, we have, I mean, those who are bidding on ADCO, uh, are all mature uh, oil and gas companies, and they understand what they are bidding on, they understand the value. I don't think it's going to impact it in, uh, directly in any shape or form, because this is not just a one year or two years arrangement. This is a long-term arrangement. Uh, I think for other uh, countries that does not have a system yet, they need to build trust, and that, and that risk 
profile uh, needs to be taken differently because it depends, uh, I mean, from country to country, the fiscal regime, stability of the fiscal regime, and the, uh, the, the kind of contract or the nature of the contract. This is all going to be uh, judged by those who are bidding versus the, uh, the current oil prices. So if someone is aspiring to put, for example, a very high uh, or very tough terms at these, at these prices, I don't think it's going to be successful. If it's a new country uh, entering into the, into the, uh, the uh, opening up the, uh, the concession. For us in the United Arab Emirates, I think we have 70 years experience. We've been reliable. We've been, uh, uh, I think, uh, in, uh, we, we launched the book uh, of, of the oil and, uh, and gas uh, year. And according to the customers, the UAE was giving the highest uh, rating in terms of customers uh, uh, confident, and we got 95%. So that's, I think, uh, a, uh, uh, something that we are proud of and, and something that makes us different from the others. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We don't have any more questions for now, but we are going to uh, thank His Excellency Mazru Ali for uh, uh, sharing his, uh, his, his thoughts and opinions on those questions. And I'm going to ask you please to remain in your seat.